What's going on, everyone? So, Granges Make Basketball uh, posted this about Christian Wood. And I really want to talk about it because it highlights what I've been saying uh, all last season, why I'm really excited for Christian Wood uh, this season. But Wood is a big part of the upside for the Lakers this season. The Braun plus Wood plus 80 trio will open eyes. Count on a bounce back three point shooting season. Side note, Using him as an athletic finisher plus anchor big role combo was a great way to suppress his impact. Unreal coaching, speaking on Darvin Ham. And so here is, kind of go over this. I don't know how well you can see it expanded because it does get a little fuzzy. But look at Christian Wood, the last uh, handful of seasons, right? When he was with Detroit, played the power forward position, athletic finisher, Anchor big. And then you see the type of ratings, right? That's the first row at the top. And then you go second, right? In Houston, played the center position. Shot creator, mobile big. B plus, A, right? Then you go to the next year, right? That's the third column with Houston. Center, shot creator, mobile big. A plus, B plus, right? Then you go to the fourth year, Christian Wood with Dallas. Center position, shot creator, mobile big. A, A. Then you go to the year with the Lakers, which is the last one at the bottom. Power forward, athletic finisher, anchor big. You got an F and an A as far as uh, rim protection, right? So three-point shot making efficiency. Now, the reason that this stuff is important and the reason that I wanted to talk about this is because, again, Christian Wood is a very good, very talented, very skilled, very specific type of player. And Darvin Ham utilized him terribly. Terribly. He utilized him as if he was a 3 and D wing as opposed to a big man that can step out and knock down the shot. Christian Wood is best in that 15-in range. He has the ability and capability to step out. Darvin Ham utilized and played Christian Wood as if he was a guy that could shoot threes. Oh, and on occasion, play down low. As opposed to a guy that can play down low and on occasion shoot threes. And also, the type of offense and sets and how Christian Woods just kind of standing around. Most of the attempts at the rim were him as an athletic finish, literally him putting the ball on the deck and making his way to the basket. It wasn't Darvin Ham putting Christian Wood in the proper position to have success, to dump the ball down to him and let him go make plays. And there were so many times all season long that we needed that, right? Like, how many times last year did our offense just get completely stagnant? And it's like, you have Christian Wood and you have Rui Hachimura. Put them on the block, dump down, dump the ball down to them, and let them just go make a play and get a basket. That's what they do. But no, you had to stand out on the perimeter. I mean, how many times was Christian Wood just standing at the top of the key? Just standing there, not moving nothing, just standing there waiting for the basketball. Like, J.J. Redick even talked about the lack of mobility, the lack of movement that we had last year, and how much better we were when plays were actually being carried out, right? And I've talked about, I think Christian Wood should be our primary backup center most of the time. Now, I do think that they're, you know, there are certain matchups, right? Like, you know, for example, say Zach Eady is coming off the bench for, you know, the Memphis Grizzlies. I don't really want Christian Wood, Christian Wood matching up to Zach Eady, right? Like, <laughs> it's the last thing you, you really want. Um, I mean, you can make an argument you don't really want Jackson Hayes matching up against, uh, you know, Zach Eady either. But, you know, at least he's seven feet where Christian Wood is, you know, six, eight, six, nine. Um, but... I, I look, I I really do believe Christian Wood can be a real ceiling raiser next year for the Lakers. 
I think, one, he's played out of position. Two, he ended up getting hurt. And three, he was dealing with a lot of off-court baby mama drama and stuff that kept him out and all that, right? I just, I think now he's going to, he, he he's good. All that stuff is resolved. He actually won. He's in good shape. He's in a good mental space. He's motivated, right? You think that he wanted to be making, you know, vet minimum two years in a row? Probably not. The only reason he went to the Lakers was because he thought that he would have the opportunity to make more money elsewhere or potentially with the Lakers, which still could happen if he's a big piece and a big part. But I just think you're going to have a, a kind of rejuvenated, excited Christian Wood on top of a better coach, better play designer, better schemer that's going to put Christian Wood in better position to have success. And I just, I really do believe that Christian Wood is going to be a big factor for the Lakers. This time last year, people were talking about Christian Wood being the piece to put the Lakers over the top. Several teams wanted Christian Wood and were waiting for Christian Wood. Like, Christian Wood ended up picking the Lakers. And it was a big deal at the time. Because this is a guy that was 17-8, and eight, can shoot the three, stretch the floor, makes a ton of sense alongside Anthony Davis. You could even start him at times, right? Like, with Jared Vanderbilt out, it might even make sense to do that. It might even make sense to go, you know, Christian Wood and, and uh, Anthony Davis, go with some size. And Christian Wood's ability to defend out on the perimeter... I mean, look at what he did against Anthony, or, uh, Kevin Durant, right? I mean, seriously, he was clamping up and making these difficult because he has like a 7'3 wingspan or whatever, right? I mean, he's long, he's lengthy. He, he just doesn't have like the true seven foot size, but he's also a very skilled scorer and big man, especially around the rim. I mean, this guy's absolute money from the mid range and, you know, kind of making plays around the basket, kicking out to open shooters. You can run your offense through him at times. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that regularly, and I'm not saying you, he always has to stay down low. No, I mean, his ability to stretch the floor is significant, right? Like, it is a element that really kind of gives the Lakers an extra edge. If all he's doing is staying down low, then yeah, you're clogging the paint, become more predictable. But if you have a nice balance, you know, he's getting, you know, a handful of threes a game or something like that, right? But literally, like, half of his field goal attempts last season were threes. And it, it, and he didn't take very many shots, period. He didn't get much opportunity, period. Like, just going over his stats last season, he averaged 17.4 minutes per game. He took a total of 5.3 attempts per game. He shot 46.6% total. 2.3 attempts were from three-point range. He only took 5.3 total. So that means only three attempts were from the field, and 2.3 were from three-point range. And he did shoot poorly. He shot 30.7%. Uh, but he shot 58.7% from two-point range. But again, a lot of it was him putting the ball on the deck and getting to the basket. He had an EFG of 53.2%, right? Like, just the year prior with Anthony Davis, he played 26 minutes per game. He got 11.5 attempts per game, shot 51.5% from the field, right? He shot 4.2 threes a game. So, again, it's a big difference. He got 7.3 attempts from two and only and 4.2 attempts from three-point range. So again, nice little balance there, right? Like, where, again, out of five attempts, two and a half of them are, are from three, right? But he shot, again, 37.6% from three-point range. He shot 59.4% from two-point range, had an EFG of 58.3. He averaged 7.3 rebounds, 1.8 assists, half a steal, 1.1 blocks, and six gave you 16.6 points per game, so basically 17 points per game. This is a guy that was 17-7, and seven, you know, a, a year removed. 
Now, again, he averaged 26 minutes per game. He's probably not going to be averaging 26 minutes a game for the Lakers. Now, he might, you know, if he's the primary backup for, um, you know, uh, uh, and, uh, LeBron James and it, maybe even Anthony Davis, maybe he does kind of average that. So maybe he could go get you, you know, 17 and 7. But let's say he gives you 18 to 20 minutes a game. Again, he averaged 17 point. Four last season, so he gives you 18 a game. If he's getting, say, six, seven attempts, and two are from three, and the other five are around the rim, right? Again, it's just proper slotting, proper utilization. And again, that's just averages, right? That's not counting the actual, like, the games that he got no touches around the rim, or he was, or he only just shot three. I mean, there were several games where literally he took like four attempts and they were all threes, right? So again, it's just, it's understanding your players. And I really do think and believe Christian Wood is going to be a big factor for the Lakers. I really do believe that Christian Wood is going to be a difference maker. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Past question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, do you agree? Do you think that, yeah, Christian Wood, he's going to be massive for the Lakers, uh, he's going to be a big piece this year. Do you think, no, he's not going to change much? Again, I'm not saying like, oh, Christian Wood, all of a sudden Lakers are a contender or anything, but I do think Christian Wood makes the Lakers a lot better. I do. But how do you feel? Let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. And that subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.